Hey, Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to thank you for being here. Welcome to another one of these quick take informal videos where we're answering some of your questions about what's going on in the markets, uh, cover some of the news that we're seeing, and, and really just help you take advantage of uh, the opportunity that, uh, that we have right now in stocks. Because I think, uh, you know, and anybody that's lived through any of these market crashes before, and if you look back 10 years from now, I think you're going to find that your best returns were made right now by not panicking, not making some of those worst investing decisions that people make during these uh, these times of crisis, and uh, and really just picking the stocks that are going to provide those, those double and even triple digit returns. Uh, so excited about uh, what we're going to do today. We're going to cover the five tech stocks that are on my buy list, okay? And actually five tech stocks that I own already, and I'm adding more. Uh, five companies that could come out of this thing stronger with a, an even bigger return. You know, in fact, of these five stocks, they've averaged... Uh, 0.07% return so far this year. Uh, might not seem like a whole much, but it's beating the market by 22%. And one stock is actually holding up with a 25% return. Now, we talked about dividend stocks last Thursday, so the five dividend stocks that are on my watch list that I'm buying uh, for safety and, and that cash flow. And while these tech stocks might not produce that cash flow, uh, the return could be even higher. And they still have that element of safety in all this. Uh, and you'll see that when we, uh, when we start getting into it. Next Thursday, I'm going to be topping off this wish list of 15 stocks with my growth names. Okay, stocks that I think could produce the largest returns of all three. Uh, so, so be sure to join the community. You know, smash that uh, that subscribe button, as they say, so you don't miss that one. I also want to invite you to join our uh, private Facebook group called Let's Talk Money Together. That's there on Facebook. Uh, we're up to 3,500 people in the community over there on Facebook right now. Got some great conversations going, and uh, it's just a way to to be a little bit closer uh, to the community you know I don't get that one that back and forth feel uh, here on YouTube that I do on Facebook so we can really talk back and forth and uh, and have a real conversation over there so I'll leave a link to that in the video description below make sure you go over there and uh, and join the community or just search for the group let's talk money together so now uh, last uh, last Tuesday we started off or last Thursday we started off with this wish list of 15 stocks. Now these are 15 stocks that I'm watching, that I'm buying, many of which I already own uh, some uh, some shares in, but I'm watching them because one for those dividend stocks they uh, they have that safety and the cash flow. Okay, and we talked about uh, what I'm looking for in a lot of these in last Thursday's video. So I'll add a link down there in the video description to that as well. Very important, uh, and it's also going to give you an idea of you know how to use the balance sheet, how to use the income statement. Uh, for a company to kind of research some of these uh, some, some of these fi fundamentals that you want to look at. So very important. Check that video out uh, because it's going to show you kind of what we're looking for in uh, to be able to know that we're in safe companies that are going to survive no matter how bad this thing gets uh, and then be around to provide those double and triple digit returns uh, when they come out of this. These tech names are going to be a little riskier though. Uh, they might not have that balance sheet strength that we talked about in Thursday's video, but they're also not seeing the sales weakness uh, that a lot of these other stocks stocks are and I actually see some revenue strength, some revenue increase on this new locked down world. Okay, so I'm still uh, watching those fundamentals on these stocks, but I'm also really looking at for a connection here to that streaming and networking and other themes in this virtually connected world like security. So these are really going to be the stocks that not only benefit from that increased internet usage, but are really just leading us through that 21st century trend. Okay, so I want to get to that. That's five tech stops I'm buying. And again, I already own all five of these. I'm just adding more because these are solid names, solid picks. Uh, and I think you're going to see why. And our first one here is Fastly, okay? Ticker FSLY. If this company, if there's any company that's going to benefit from that stay at home scenario, it's this one. It's Fastly. The company operates a cloud platform for content delivery, which is just a fancy way really of saying that it helps get websites and inter internet content to you faster. Okay, it's also providing the streaming and the video services, which which puts it right in the middle of some of the biggest themes in that internet and media trend. Okay, uh, now revenue grew 39% last year to 200 million, and it's expected 30% higher this year to 260 million. So this is still a, a very small company, uh, but some with some solid growth and a surprisingly strong balance sheet for a smaller company like that. This one has uh, Fastly has 131 million dollars in cash on the balance sheet and only 30 million in debt. So it's actually net cash positive. Uh, and what you'll see with a lot of these smaller growth stocks, these small cap stocks, is they they're using so much debt just to leverage up their. Uh, 
you know, leverage up their income uh, and, and grow that grow that, that revenue. But they are in a very, uh, you know, very precarious debt situation, a balance sheet situation there. So, um, you know, not quite the uh, the fundamental safety or the balance sheet safety that we talked about last Thursday, except for this one, you know, 131 million in cash against only 30 million in debt. Fastly definitely has the uh, the balance sheet strength to, to survive through this crisis, uh, no matter how bad it gets, okay? And worst comes to worst, they're going to be able to tap the credit market, uh, leverage up a little bit more, and be able to pay for those, uh, you know, those expenses. Now, what I like about Fastly, though, also is is that it's the center of this biggest internet and media trend, and it's about get, about to get another boost in that 5G and the Internet of Things. Okay, so if you think about it, uh, Fastly just um, makes the, all the streaming, all the internet content, everything, all the data uh, get to you faster. And we're about to get into 5G, which is just going to be an explosion in, uh, you know, Internet of Things, equipment, equipment and appliances. So basically, we're looking at a wave of content and, and data coming at us. And companies like Fastly, that can act as a toll road on this, uh, are going to do very well. Now, it is down 7.7% from January, but a strong rebound off of the March lows. And this one is rising in a lot of the days where we're seeing uh, market weakness when the market was lower. So that's a really good sign that uh, some of these stocks are actually up on days when the rest of the market is down. A lot of you know strength and, and conviction buying there. Now there's only three analysts here with price targets on Fastly. So take this $27 estimate with a grain of salt, uh, though I think this could easily go to between that $25 and $30 per share over the next year and even higher into the long term. Our next tech stock here is Zscaler, that's ticker ZS. And I recommended Zscaler earlier this year on that cybersecurity threat from these rogue nations like, like Iran and Korea, and really the hacking, hacking attempts that they've used to, uh, to wage that kind of modern warfare. Uh, the company is a cloud-delivered security software company focusing on those large enterprise space uh, and, and really two product categories, you know, managing applications and then websites online and then internal corporate applications, all right? So the cloud is really the key here for Zscaler, and, and it's their main target is taking that market share from the legacy cybersecurity firms, uh, the providers built on that hardware delivery. The company reported 48% sales growth in the first quarter, and new product launches this year is going to give it that opportunity to really cross-sell clients. Uh, now, I really like this one. There's no doubt that the, the 21st century is just one of digital risks, okay? Uh, like we said, talked about, 2019 was a record year for data breaches, okay? Up 33% from the year, year before, and, and we're starting to see some of those large-scale state-sponsored cyber threats, okay? So I like, I like Zscaler over some of those legacy cybersecurity firms uh, for that innovative software approach, that cloud-based approach, and, and uh, could really give this one an edge. Now, uh, Zscaler is actually up 25% year-to-date uh, and a big rebound off that March low, but this one still could have some big upside potential, especially further out, you know, three, five, 10 years. We got better coverage here with 14 analyst estimates and price targets between $37 a share to as high as 89 each for a 51% return over the next year. Our next tech stock here, Uber, ticker UBER. And a lot of people think that Uber is just about that ride sharing, but it's an entire connection platform that could be used for a lot more than what it is right now, okay? So I, I like it over Lyft here because it's got that Uber Eats, which is doing really well with the delivery to, to lock down customers. Uh, and the CEO actually recently came out saying that the company has enough cash on the balance sheet to ride out this storm, okay? So uh, very important for that investor confidence. Again, it's much more uh, than a ride sharing and food delivery. You know, Uber has a very strong position in self-driving tech. Eh? And when you start to see those autonomous cars on the road for commercial purposes, you know, right now they're mostly on, on the road for testing. But when you actually see uh, self-driving and AI cars for commercial purposes, it's going to be Uber that leads the way on that thing, I think. So, so basically, I'm buying the ride sharing and the delivery business uh, for how much the stock is priced at with an upside option with an upside option on that self-driving. Uh, it is off 36% from the uh, the February high and 45% from that 52-week high set last June. Uh, but this uh, it's been a strong bounce off the bottom when the CEO noted that they had enough cash on hand to survive it. And I really like the potential in this one. So we've got price targets from 29 analysts here, ranging from $30 a share on the low end to as high as $60 a share, or 131% return over the next year. Our largest tech stock pick here, Cisco Systems, ticker CSCO. And Cisco is obviously the world's largest supplier of those networking solutions, okay? So everything from, from keeping you connected at home with the routers and, and the data centers 
servers, cloud software that delivers the internet, basically everything that has to do with uh, you know, connecting people with the internet. Uh, growth has slowed a little bit, obviously, once you get to be that, that uh, multi-hundred billion dollar company, it's harder to grow sales at uh, $50 billion a year. Uh, but revenue did increase by 5% last year. And what I really like here is that operating income, okay? So that's the amount of sales left after paying suppliers and the, and the cost of goods to run the business. Uh, that increased 15%. So a huge vote of confidence for management that, that it's not only able to turn that, uh, to, to increase sales on that huge number, you know, $50 billion, it's hard to hard to move the needle uh, on $50 billion every year, but as it was able to turn that 5% sales increase into a 15% growth in operating income. Uh, so basically get a 3X uh, result on its sales growth. Um, it has over $33 billion in cash on the balance sheet and only $14 billion in debt. So very strong balance sheet here. Obviously, Cisco is not going anywhere no matter how bad this thing gets. It's gonna be there and it's gonna, it's gonna take advantage of this, uh, this increase in networking and streaming. What I also like about uh, Cisco, and it's not necessarily the growth of, growth of Fastly that we looked at, but it's still a leader in the space and really able to drive that higher profitability from its size. You know, it's a, overall a strong upside pick, but but also that 3.8% dividend yield. So I could have just as easily put this one on my dividend stocks pick last Thursday. Um, it is 22% off from the February high and 32% off the high of last June. So uh, a little less of a growth play, uh, but I think this one has some real surprise potential. And uh, Cisco is, is widely covered with 16 analysts here and price targets from $40 a share on the low side to $60 a share or a 55% return over the next year. This next tech stock, I debated whether to include it. It's NVIDIA, ticker NVDA, and it's a, the really the name in graphic processing chips. So making your computer games and graphics look their best. But it's also got a big upside growth here on data centers. So that's really why I, uh, why I included it, that data centers, self-driving, and the AI-related applications. Uh, we're gonna see it's a little bit pricier, maybe not quite as much the uh, the rebound potential, but still very much an upside potential on that uh, that data center self-driving and really the AI theme here. You know, basically my pick here is for in NVIDIA is a lot like Uber, okay? It's a solid base on that main business of graphics, uh, which is really, uh, you know, I think where the pr shares are priced right now with an upside option on some of those biggest trends in tech, okay? So I don't think the uh, the AI, the self-driving, the data centers are really priced into the shares at this point. I think you're basically getting those for free and that potential for free. So sales did grow at 41% on a year-over-year -year basis in the fourth quarter, uh, and that was mostly on really weak comparables in the fourth quarter of last year. Uh, but the company does have a really safe cash position with $11 billion in cash and, and just $2.6 billion in debt. So definitely a lot of financial flexibility and survivability here. Uh, it's still 20% off the February high, but probably, like I said, one of the riskier of the five on valuation. So the shares hadn't come down quite as much. Uh, they're still fairly, uh, fairly highly priced. Uh, but like I said, I think they're basically just priced in for that, uh, that gaming and graphics business. And you get the data centers, self-driving and AI related applications for free. Analysts aren't quite as optimistic here, obviously, with a low target of $220 a share and a high of $360 over the next year. Uh, and that's based on this estimates from 30 analysts. So five tech stocks that I think could not only survive and thrive uh, after the market gets back to normal, but are actually getting a bump from this market and from those stay-at-home conditions. Uh, a reminder, check out the links below. Check out that Thursday video where we talked about you know, how to use the balance sheet, how to use the income statement to really find that financial flexibility, the survivability, and obviously those cash dividends. Uh, stay, stay safe out there. Stay calm. Join the community out over there on Facebook and uh, let me know if you have any questions 